Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. It's night number one of DPD's new safety plan for downtown Detroit. Visitors greeted by weapons detectors and a greater police presence. Thanks for being with us here on the News at 11. I'm Kimberly Gill. Good evening. I'm Karen Drew in for Devin tonight. Chief James White unveiled the 12 point anti violence strategy Thursday in response to a string of shootings in Greektown last weekend. Tonight we get to see that plan put into action and Sean Lay live in Greektown to show us what it looks like. Sean, good evening. That 12 point plan, Karen and Kimberly, good evening to you. We can see it up close. And I tell you what, the first thing you notice is the police presence downtown, Greektown, every corner, every street. And then you mentioned those weapon detector devices uh, on some street corners here, again, Greektown and downtown. This is meant to find illegal guns, and police are trying to make it safer, obviously, but trying to prevent a shooting or the next shooting. Long as these weapons are on the streets in the wrong hands, is going to happen. A massive show of force from Detroit police in Greektown and downtown. Officers on every corner. You can't miss the police gear. People passing through weapons detectors. Last weekend, there were shootings downtown on the Riverwalk and in Greektown. Longtime security guard Daryl Strotter was shot and killed. The memorials to him continue. All together, we say, Big Daryl, Big Daryl. let the balloons go. Barry Williams. We don't love each other anymore. Says things have changed. I've been down here almost 22, 23 years. And it's. What's changed? The atmosphere, the people. You know, I wish it could go back to the way it was, but it'll never be the same. Ray Delach worked security for years with Strauder. We worked it. We worked this whole block together for at years for ye over 25 years. Kept it safe for 25 years. Not one problem. What's changed? The youth has changed. It starts at home. It starts at home. Leadership. Police putting in a 12 part plan to return safety here and to go after illegal guns. What's all what's the message of all that? Yeah, the message is come downtown, have a good time. Uh, we're going to be down here, heavy, heavy police presence. We're going to be enforcing curfew, enforcing the noise. As you can see, it's a lot quieter than it was last weekend. Back here live, not just tons of police down here, also community groups as well, talking to people, hanging out, trying to make things light and safer, but big time police presence tonight. Not great weather tonight, but it was rather busy. Now, police say whether they have an 85 degree like last Saturday and a crush of people coming down or a light night like this, they're going to be here on the weekends doing the same thing again, looking for those illegal guns, trying to prevent any more violence. We're live in Greektown tonight. Sean Lee, Local 4, back to you. Oh, it all works, Sean. We appreciate it. Women's access to the most common abortion pill has been preserved for now by order of the U.S. Supreme Court. The high court this evening issued a stay, effectively freezing lower court rulings that would have restricted use of the medication. The court's order did not explain why it granted the stay requested by the Biden administration and a company that manufactures mefeprestone. Justices Samuel Alito and Clarence Thomas publicly dissented. That means FDA approval of mefeprestone remains in place despite a Texas judge's ruling two weeks ago blocking that approval and also questioning the drug safety. That lawsuit continues and appeals could go on for months. Well, she just wants to walk without help and go back to school. The Brownstown family is traveling a great distance to make that possible for eight-year-old Sophie. She's dealt with a rare condition affecting her legs since birth, and the only surgeon they've been able to find who's willing to operate on her is in West Palm Beach, Florida. Jacqueline Francis is live with the Turner family story as they head south for the second procedure. Jacqueline. Sophie Turner was diagnosed with a rare bone condition here at Children's Hospital in Detroit. But when it comes to saving her legs, there's only one surgeon up for the job, a specialist out of Florida who could change the eight year old's life forever. I'll take this and hold the door. It's the kind of freedom we take for granted. Every step for Sophie Turner, a mini miracle. It started at birth. Her legs were the only short part of her body. Other than that, she was proportioned. What they first thought was dwarfism turned out to be something far more rare. The diagnosis, a congenital bone deformity known as bilateral proximal femoral focal deficiency. There we go. As she grew and her legs didn't, doctors recommended amputation. Sophie's mom, Angel, got a second, third, and fourth opinion. It's been 
a long journey. I've taken her to doctor after doctor and I finally had found somebody that listened to me and told me what I needed to do and told me, you know, she's going to be okay. Based in Florida, Dr. Dror Paley was the answer to their prayers. In fact, he invented the surgery that would save Sophie's legs. When they finally got an appointment. It was like meeting the president of the United States. That's that in, in my world, orthopedics, he's a god. So it was very um, overwhelming. That day was very emotional. But now it's time to go back to Florida for the next operation. So I'll reconstruct the whole leg and she'll be able to use it. Walk. Walk correctly and then it'll probably grow and then evenly. And get to go back to school. Yes, yeah, so you get to go back to school. Insurance won't cover the surgery, no. deeming it elective. But for Sophie, it'd be life changing. Dr. Paley says after the operation. She will walk, run, jump like any other kid. So. I have faith in him. So get this, Dr. Paley has agreed to perform the surgery free of charge, which leaves the family on the hook for other costs and expenses like travel, lodging and recovery costs. They did launch a GoFundMe. We've put that link inside this story on clickondetroit.com. Reporting live in Detroit, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. She just wants to walk and go back to school. Let's just hope that she sees that day. Jacqueline, we appreciate it. Well, let's talk about that big story. An NFL investigation has found five players violated a league's rules on sports gambling, and four of those five players our Detroit Lions suspended indefinitely our receiver Quintez Cephas and safety CJ Moore. The league says both of them bet on NFL games, which is a major violation. The Lions immediately cut ties with both players when the news broke. Now wide receivers Jameson Williams and Stanley Berryhill got six game suspensions for mobile gambling on other sports while they were at the Lions Allen Park facility. The biggest loss for the Lions is Williams, the speedster who is set to play a key role in the offense. He missed most of last season while recovering from knee surgery and will now have to sit out the first six games of the new season. Williams agent said in a statement today, Jameson takes full responsibility for his actions and is very apologetic to the NFL, his teammates, and the fans and city of Detroit. However, it is important to note that Jameson's violation was not for betting on football, but rather due to a technical rule regarding the actual location in which the online bet was placed and which would otherwise be allowed by the NFL outside of the club's facility. Warren Mayor Jim Fouts is disqualified for running for a fifth term. An appeals court ruled today Fouts is not allowed to run in this year's mayoral race, overturning the ruling of a lower court. In 2020, Warren voters approved a charter amendment that establishes term limits for mayors, allowing three four-year terms. Fouts argued that didn't apply to him, saying the amendment didn't apply retroactively. Well, today, the Michigan Court of Appeals disagreed. I give them credit. If the Supreme Court sustains this, then they will establish the TKO, a technical knockout of Jim Fouts, and they will prevent me from running for mayor again, and they will prevent the people from having a choice. Fouts says it's up to the election commission to ask for an appeal. All right, we made it through the week. The weekend's here. It's Friday night, and look at that radar. Okay. It's okay. It's, yeah, for right now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. If you're headed out tonight, I guess it's good. Right. As most of us are, you know, most people are just in bed or, you know, be sleeping when it's dry and then rain returns tomorrow morning. But it is quiet now. But we'll have some showers tomorrow. 47 at 8 a.m., 54 by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And we do expect showers throughout much of the day. Uh, heaviest will be in the morning, but we still could have some showers in the afternoon as well. But the weekend is not a total wash. We will have plenty of dry periods as well, but it is going to be kind of damp and cool through much of the weekend. So rain returns overnight tonight, a few more raindrops tomorrow, especially in the morning, and then a mix of sun and clouds on Sunday with just a spotty shower, but it does look like Sunday will be the drier of the two days. Next week, more changes ahead, and I'll have that coming up. Thanks, Kim. Hit the baseball. Pretty exciting, even if it is on a tee. And one tiny tee ball player is letting her excited show on her way to first base. Look at her go. 
Oh, we'll have that plus. <laughs> Imagine if your family photos suddenly disappeared from the only website storing them. What's being done to help users who had no idea this was going to happen? And a terrible accident up in Roscommon County takes the lives of a married couple. Will police say what went wrong on this road? Next.